If one of my children or grandchildren were being held captive for $17 million, would I pay the ransom? Hmm. One moment, please. Hello? Yes, your grandson is being held ransom for $17 million. Pay the ransom or he will die. My grandson? What? Grandson? I don't even have a son. How is this even possible? Who's calling? Yes, it is your grandson being held for ransom. Pay the ransom or he will die, as I said. A likely story. Hey, do I know you? Your voice sounds kind of familiar. Nobody you know is currently calling you. Why are you asking me these questions and distracting me? Because I feel like I could hear you outside of my door. <laughs> and that takes care of that. Anyway, what is up, everybody? Random Random Man here, bringing you my last review of 2017, and it is for All the Money in the World. Based on the book Painfully Rich, The Outrageous Fortunes and Misfortunes of the Heirs of J. Paul Getty, written by John Pearson, the film tells the story of J. Paul Getty, played by Christopher Plummer, and his refusal to cooperate with the extortion demands carried out by a group of kidnappers from the organized crime mafia group Nedrangheta, who have abducted his grandson, John Paul Getty III, played by Charlie Plummer, no relation to Christopher, in 1973. Going into this movie, I had quite a bit of interest to see it. From its cast, its concept, and its director, Ridley Scott, at the helm, this looked like a neat little historical crime drama. That is until about a month ago when this movie received national attention for the controversy behind the scenes as the original actor who played J. Paul Getty, Kevin Spacey, was convicted of multiple sexual assault allegations and in an attempt to not tarnish the image of the movie, Scott and company agreed to edit Spacey's performance as Getty out of the movie, recast the role to Christopher Plummer who <laughs> coincidentally and ironically was the original choice for Getty, and do a bunch of reshoots to get this movie out in time for its intended release date and for awards season subsequently as this movie ended up getting three nominations at this year's Golden Globes. Now that made me want to see this movie even more just to see if it was possible to get this movie done and successfully tell its story with all of the behind the scenes controversy. What I can say about the cast and the performances across the board is that they are all super strong. Technically, I would say the lead at the center of this movie is Gail Getty, the mother of the kidnapped John Paul Getty III, played by Michelle Williams. She delivered a tremendous performance. A lot of grief is associated with her character and her desire to want to cooperate and get her grandson out of harm's way, but also having to deal with the stubbornness that is her former father-in-law, J. Paul Getty. And let's talk about J. Paul Getty, played by Christopher Plummer. He has a lot more screen time than I expected to just be a supporting role. He is a bigger supporting player than I thought he would be. And with his performance, setting aside that, I was curious to see how Kevin Spacey would have played this character, covered in a bunch of makeup, but seeing how Scott and company got an actual old man, Plummer, to play an old man in his 80s, the performance that Plummer does give is so grimy, but also virtuoso at the same time, that it backs up how much of a legendary actor this guy truly is. We also have Mark Wahlberg, who plays a former CIA operative who steps in to help out and acts as an intermediary of sorts between uh, Gail and J. Paul Getty. He is great. We also have Charlie Plummer as the kidnapped Getty, and I thought he was solid for the screen time that he did have. And we also have Romaine Duras as Sequanta one of the kidnappers and he forms kind of a bond between himself and the kidnapped Getty. I thought he was also strong in this film. Basically everybody in this movie delivers outstanding performances. The writing in this film by David Scarpa had me invested from the beginning. 
we do get some backstory after the initial kidnapping of the kidnapped Getty in his youth and his life with his mom, played by Williams, and his dad, John Paul Getty II, and the relationship that they all had with uh, the eldest Getty, played by Plummer. And then when the actual investigation to get the kidnapped Getty out of there with the eldest Getty's refusal to pay the ransom gets underway, it's fascinating to see the story play out because it's crazy to think that this actually did happen back in the 1970s. I mean, it is true that J. Paul Getty really was that much of a cheap ass to not fork over $17 million to save his grandson, even though at his time he was worth $2 billion for being such a massive oil tycoon. In fact, it's even shown at one point in the movie that Getty had a phone booth installed inside of his enormous estate for guests if they wanted to make a phone call, but they would still have to pay to use it. So <laughs> to say J. Paul Getty was frugal is an understatement, but we do get an understanding of where this guy comes from in not wanting to pay the ransom at first and seeing just the uh, development within his character, uh, Michelle Williams' character, all of that. The movie even bounces back and forth to sequences where the kidnapped Getty is being held and the other sequences of where he is trying to be taken out by his mother, uh, Wahlberg's character. These scenes are mostly kept engaging by Ridley Scott's direction as at this movie's core, this is a dialogue heavy movie, which is going to be hit or miss with some people because most of the movie is just a bunch of characters talking to each other and making negotiations to get the kidnapped Getty out of Italy and back into the US in safe hands. But to me, I was pretty absorbed into the story, mostly by the performances and just seeing how the story would play out. And it just made for something that was at times intense, but mostly thought provoking in getting to know what these characters are thinking. On a technical level, this movie looks and sounds very good. The cinematography is very bleak in the way it looks, mostly because it appears as if a bluish green tint is put all over the movie, especially during the scenes where we are at uh, Getty's estate, but it gave the movie a distinct uh, visual style with itself. The movie also sounds great. The uh, way the movie looks on a production design level in it looking like the 1970s definitely caught my eye. I also have to mention the editing in this movie because like I said, there was a last ditch attempt within the past month to edit out Spacey's original performance as Getty and replace him with uh, Plummer's performance. And in terms of how I could tell if there were any scenes redone, there was only one glaring moment that I noticed that. And that's the scene in Saudi Arabia where J. Paul Getty steps out, takes off his sunglasses. And I remember that scene uh, in the original trailer of the film with Kevin Spacey. And it was noticeable that he was digitized out of the movie and replaced with Plummer superimposed onto the background. But other than that, the rest of the scenes implemented with Plummer's performance and the rest of what plays out in the movie is really well done. As for issues, the movie had a tendency to drag at certain points, especially towards the middle act of this movie being kind of repetitive and slow, but that did not detract totally from this film as I thought it was mostly well timed at about two hours and 15 minutes, but it could have been tightened up a little more. Also, uh, with Mark Wahlberg's character, like I said, he is great with his performance, but I didn't really know how much purpose he had within the film other than being the intermediary of sorts between Gail and J. Paul Getty. It's kind of the opposite thing I had with uh, Patriot's Day and a lot of other people had with this film too. By the way, I blind bought this film on Black Friday and this was such a surprise. I think this is a great movie. But with Patriot's Day, Wahlberg's character in this film was entirely fictional and that wasn't as big of an issue as I thought it would be as that didn't detract totally from this film. But in all the money in the world, I'm not sure if his character was fictional or not. Aside from these qualms, I have to give a lot of credit where credit is due to Ridley Scott and company for getting this movie to come together, be redone within a month before its intended release at the end of this year, and it being a solid film in my opinion. The main draw of this movie to me comes from the amazing performances, especially from 
Williams, and Plummer, who I feel gave one of the best supporting performances of the year, and his scenes were done in only 10 days, which is crazy. And then the fascinating true story that is played out on screen to this dramatized interpretation this movie came out better than many people expected. I certainly thought it was successful as this movie, again, is nominated for three Golden Globes, Best Director for Ridley Scott, Best Actress Drama for Michelle Williams, and Best Supporting Actor for Christopher Plummer. And I think that this movie is something that will garner interest to historical buffs like myself or for people just in for some acting that is surely to impress. I definitely recommend it. Oh, and one final note, like I said at the beginning of this video, this is my final review of the year, but fear not as, like I've said in my previous review for The Shape of Water, be on the lookout for my favorite movies of the year video that is coming very soon. My final verdict for all the money in the world is... Four out of five stars. Thank you all, as always, for watching. Be sure to like this video, comment on what you thought of all the money in the world. Social media links in the description. Subscribe to my channel for more, and I'll catch you on the next movie review.